The Legend of the Christmas Stocking, written by Rick Osborne, illustrated by Jim Griffin. New York Evening Post, get it here, Peter waved his last newspaper. Read all about it, Pirates on the High Seas. The stagecoach rolled up and stopped. A man leaned out and said, I'll take that. I'll take that, Peter. Any word about your father? No, sir, but we expect his ship to return soon. Peter thanked the man, put the coins in his pocket, and started to run. He had an important stop to make before going home. So there's a man. He's getting his, his newspaper. It's snowing cold. And this is the stagecoach right here. See the horses that pull it? Peter stopped in front of a small shop. Slicked to back his hair and stomped the frozen snow off his boots. A sign hanging above the window of the store read, Everything would. Peter looked inside and his heart sank. Bursting into the store, he said, Mr. Dewey, where is it? You didn't sell it, did you? Jim Dewey looked up and laughed. The woodworker was a longtime family friend. He was old enough to be Peter's father, grandfather, but his cheery smile made him seem a lot younger. Slow down, Pete. You know you can call me Uncle Jim. Sorry, Uncle Jim. I was just worried. So where is the ship? So look, he looked in the window. The, the ship wasn't in the window anymore. But what do we see in the window? I see Christmas stockings, stockings. And look, he's using his wood carver's tool. And there's Peter's newspaper bag. He says, where is it? Where is the ship? <gasps> Uncle Jim brushed wood shavings from his leather apron. Reaching up to a top shelf, he took down a big, model ship. He carefully set it on the wood wooden counter. Peter sucked in his breath. This is an exciting copy of the ex exact copy of the USS Constitution. The pride of the squadron is a three mastered 200 foot ring gate. It's almost identical to the one your dad is sailing on. You didn't really think I would sell it to someone else, did you? Uncle Jim teased. I didn't know. Why did you take it out of the window and hang it, hang up some old stop, socks instead? Peter asked. So there's his ship. And like his dad's on a ship that looks like that. Yeah, I like his sweater and his hat. He even has his coat and his scarf on. It's cold. Peter's mother looked up from her sewing just as he carried a load of wood through the kitchen door. How did you do today, son? Sold every paper except yours, of course. Everyone knows we're waiting for Dad to come home, so they all buy papers from me. Peter set down the wood just as his youngest sister Patricia skidded through the room and hugged him. He smiled. The beef stew that his sister, Krista, was cooking for dinner. After putting two coins into his pouch, he handed the rest of his week's pay to his mother. His stomach growled as he thought about eating the stew. So there's the coins that he's given to his mom. Give him his hug and there's his little sister. I like that chair she's sitting in. Mother, any word about Dad? The newspaper says our fleet is having trouble with pirates, asked Peter. It's fine, Peter. I'm sure it's just a bad winter storm. 
mother assured him. Uncle Jim said, if dad doesn't get home in time, I should give you the money I have to buy gifts for the girls. But I really want that scooter. She sighed. I know, but how would your sisters feel on Christmas morning if you have that beautiful boat and the girls only have an apple and a piece of candy? But I deserve it. I'm the one doing all the work. Dad said if I worked while he was away, I could use some of the money I earned to buy the boat. Peter choked back his tears. I just want him to come home. His mother hugged him. I know, I miss him too. It's Peter and his mom. On Sunday, Peter got up early to hitch the horse to the sleigh his dad had built. After breakfast, Peter, Patricia, and Krista and their mother huddled together in the sleigh to go to church. In inside Brick Church, Peter held Patricia's hand, little hand while they sang hymns. He thought about the, the schooner so much that he could bear, barely knew what he was singing. Peter s stared at Pastor Spring's socks. Not the ones that Pastor Spring was wearing, but the ones that were tacked up in front of the pulpit. So there they are in their sleigh. So his dad built a sleigh, horse-drawn sleigh. And up here, there's the church. Because the church building has a steeple. See all the, all the other sleighs parked in front? Pastor Spring took his spot behind the podium. Smiling, he said, For those of you wondering about my socks, don't worry they're clean. Everyone laughed. Pastor Spring's eyes sparkled as he looked around the room. I've hung up my best pair of socks because I want to tell you about the tradition of hanging stocking socks or stockings on the fireplace mantel on Christmas Eve. Perhaps you've already read about hanging up socks in, the, in Peter's New York Evening Post. Peter grinned. Pastor Spring continued, but where did we ever get such an idea? Let me tell you the story. The church went quiet. Everyone liked Pastor Spring's stories. So there's his socks. So there's a story about the socks. It started many, many years ago when a poor man, I'll call Stephanus. He was a shoemaker. One day, he was putting the final touches on a very fine pair of sandals when the door of his shop squeaked open and a well-dressed young man stepped inside. I trust that you and your daughters are well, the young man said. I am fine, Nicholas, Stephanus replied. I only have one worry in life. And what is that? Nicholas asked. My daughters want to be married, Stephanus said. And I don't know if I'll be able to afford three dowries. Hmm, Nicholas said. Without the dowry money, your girls could never be married. Is that right? Stephanus nodded his head sadly. God will help, Nicholas told the old man. I hope you're right, Stephanus replied. Nicholas paid for his shoes and left. So there he goes. And there's a guy. He's making his shoes right there. So he puts them up on a pedestal. He nails them, kind of tacks them together. And he says, I don't know how I'm going to pay for my daughter's weddings. A few nights later, Stephanus and his daughters were sitting by the fireplace after dinner when something heavy flew through the open door and landed clunk on the stone floor. Stephanus and his three daughters grasped. Claudia, the oldest, ran to pick it up. Father, 
someone has given us a bag of gold coins, said Claudia. Now you can be married, Claudia, their father rejoiced. The three sisters laughed and danced around the room. Stephanus ran to the window to see who had been so generous. The street was empty. Soon after Claudia's wedding, a second thing, bag of gold flew through the window and landed clank on the floor. It must be for you, Carnifia, the youngest daughter, Penelope said. Again, Steph Statinus looked outside. Stephanus looked outside, but again he found no one. There's that bag coming through the window. And there's his three daughters, like all their dresses. One damp evening, sometime after the second wedding, Penelope hung her washing around the room to dry. She hung her stockings over the fireplace. Would you believe it? A third leather pouch filled with gold flew on the through the open window, but this time the gold landed on one of Penelope's stockings. And there it goes. Stephanus ran out the door and ran after the unknown giver. Stop, he called. Why are you doing this? Then Stephanus saw someone in the darkness, and he knew who it was. Nicholas, is that you? Please stop, Nicholas. Nicholas stepped out of the darkness. He wanted his gifts to be a secret. Before my parents died, they gave me three bags of gold. They wanted me to have enough for everything I needed. But when you told me about your daughters, I know I had to help. But you gave us all three bags of gold, and we did nothing to deserve them, Stephanus cried. Nicholas served God, Pastor Spring explained. He understood that God had set the example for giving when he gave his only son, Jesus. None of us deserve to have Jesus die for us, as God gives to us even when we don't deserve it. Giving to others shows God's love. Peter hung his head and thought of his leather pouch of money. Pastor Spring went on. As the years went by, the story of the gift of gold spread, and people started to hang stockings by the fireplace on a special day each year. Now people here in New York are starting to hang stockings on Christmas Eve. I can't think of a better way to remind us of all of God's wonderful gift to us, Jesus. Peter prayed. He asked God to help him to have more generous and whispered aloud, please bring my dad home safely. He says, bring my dad to church. It's his sisters and his mom. Every night, Mother secretly sewed special stockings as a surprise for Peter and his sisters. She stitched each child's name along the top. On Christmas morning, Peter watched with joy as his sisters emptied their stockings, giggling and squealing at the contents. Each had an apple, a leather pouch of lemon drops, and a beautiful hand-carved wooden doll. The girls hung, hugged their mother. Peter gave, give Peter a hug too. He worked very hard to buy all these, all presents so that we could have a happy Christmas. Peter couldn't stop smiling. What he had done felt so right. He handed his mother a beautiful wrapped package. This is for you, Peter said. Tears filled his mother's eyes as she opened the gift. It was his mother's favorite chocolates, the one Peter's dad usually bought her for Christmas. Inside was a card. It read, I miss him too, Peter. He feels that pretty package to give his mother. But I 
like a pretty Christmas garland up here. Knock, knock, knock. Peter ran to open the door. There stood Uncle Jim. Merry Christmas, Uncle Jim said, smiling. I brought you something. Just then a man stepped out from behind Uncle Jim. Dad! They hugged each other and Peter wouldn't let go. The rest of the family crowded around and joined in the hugging. Later, when everyone was settled around the crackling fire, Dad said to Peter, I was so eager to see you all, I didn't bring my bags inside. Would you go get them out of Peter out of Jim's wagon? Sure, Dad. Peter ran to the small horse-drawn wagon and stopped dead in his tracks. He stopped to whoop. There in the wagon was the wooden schooner. It looked even bigger and more beautiful than Peter remembered. His dad walked up and put an arm around Peter. I'm proud of you, son. Peter smiled and thought of how glad he was that the story of the stockings had reminded him of what Christmas is all about. So there's Peter and his dad. There's a big ship that he had wanted. It's a beautiful story. I hope you enjoyed it.